Hello and welcome to another PyQt video and in this video we're going to look at how we can style our application using style sheets. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for this uh, page here and this page adds a lot of good information on how to style specific widgets. Q abstract area, checkbox, in Q combo box, etc. So have a scroll and look through that and first we're going to start with styling inside of Qt, Qt Designer. Now, if you're familiar with CSS, you're coming from web applications or something like that, this is going to be re really easy to pick up. So uh, let's go first here into main window and see what we can do here. And if I if I scroll down here to style sheet where it says style sheet, I can uh, write down a style sheet here or I can press this button and this will open uh, the style sheet editor. Now, this is a very handy tool that will allow you to include images. Uh, that would be a resource here. So background image, border image. And we'll go to resources later on in the next video, possibly. Uh, gradients. Uh, and you can select what, what you want to add, if it's a color, background color, colors, and fonts. So right now I'm in main window. If I, for example, let's add a font here. I'll choose a Source Sense Pro. Do a 12 here, make it bold, right? and I say OK and that adds the code for us so if I say OK right now everything everything inside of main window including uh, the menu there will have that font and well, I'll just place another push button here alright so uh, I would like my layout to be different here so I can go and change my li layout at any time by right clicking going to layout and now I want to lay out vertically if I go back here and I can clear the style sheet by pressing this button. So if, if I go back there and I, I'm saying, you know what, I, I just wanna I, I just wanna do this for buttons. And and for that I would say and I'm saying Q push button because that's the class name. Okay, you can see the class name of our buttons here. And if I say that okay, you can see that the title there, uh, the the menu is not that doesn't no longer has the, the font. So I'll just add something else in here, so like a label. Okay, text label, so that we know that we can clearly see that's only affecting Q push button. Okay, let's say if I just want to affect this second button that I added here, and for that um, I'm gonna need to look at the object name, right? So right now the object name is push button. If I call this, uh, let's say my my button, now the object name has changed to my button and if I go back to my style sheet I can target that specific button by doing by doing this okay so ash my button and if I say okay only that button is targeted so that was object name selector now we're gonna look at uh, property selectors so our button has properties, as you can see here on the property window. So if I press one button, let's press use our uh, awesome button here. So these are all the properties he has. So we can use some of these properties. And for this example, I'm going to use uh, checked. So if it's checked, I'm going to give it a different color. So let me go up here to main window. We're still in the global scope, but I'll get to local scope in a, in a minute. Open this up. So if I want to do and this time we're going to use a, a background color. So for property selectors or also known as complex selectors, we use this bracket and if we look at the properties of, uh, on the button on the right hand side, we'll, uh, we can use one of those properties. And I'm going to see checked is the property that I want and I'm going to say when it's equal to true that's when I want this style to be applied, okay? And what I'll place in here, in this time we're going to use this method here, a background color. So I go to color and say background color and I'll select the background color for my button, okay? So if I say okay, nothing happens. Basically any, any button that is checked is going to have that. So if I go to one of my buttons Let's start with the big one, and I scroll down to that property where it says checked. You can see that it's grayed out uh, because it's not checkable. So we got to make it checkable first. And now if we check it, 
you don't see it right now but if we do a control R you can see that my my button now has that color and that's its background color that I affected right now all right so if I do the same with the other button the same thing is going to happen so let's just check that out make sure it's working so there we go that's our button and I can check it so on and off right that okay so as, as you've seen uh, complex selectors sometimes have this weird behavior but uh, if you want to make sure it's working uh, you just do a control R and, and check that now let's go back to scopes and for that I'm gonna use the horizontal layout down here and inside of that layout I'll place two push buttons so you can like try and get that pixel and place the push button in there or you can just drop it inside the layout like this so I'll have another one there And now we have two push buttons inside of these layout. So for this layout, I'll, I'll call it something. Uh, my button, my button layout. So let's see how we can target everything that is inside of this button layout. So I'll go back here to main window, open up the style sheet. So I would like to access everything inside of my cube H box layout and for that I would do something like um, like this QH box layout and I'm even s telling it that this is the name of the object and everything inside of it all the Q push buttons inside of it would have this background color now the reason why this doesn't happen is because we can't really target QH box uh, well any Q layout in fact, if I select my layout, you'll see that we don't have a style sheet for the layout. So there's no way of doing that. Uh, an alternative is to place this layout inside of something. And for that we could use a frame or a widget. The thing is, both frame and widget, they have their own unique layouts. So if I just place a frame down here. So instead of placing the layout inside the frame, we could place just the push buttons inside the frame instead. So I'm going to grab one of these push buttons and I'll place it inside that frame. And then the other one inside the frame. And it, this sometimes happens, it didn't go inside the frame. So if I control and click, select these two, right click and I go into cut. And then I click on the frame, right click and I go into paste. There, now it's going to paste inside the frame. Now I can get rid of that button layout. Uh, if I press delete when I select this, it, it, it doesn't delete it. I would have to actually select it here and press the delete button and that, that will do it. Now the frame, as you can see, doesn't have a layout yet. If I right click on the frame and go into layout, I can select uh, a layout here. Now that we have the push buttons inside the frame, that inside the widget that actually supports style sheets, we can style the buttons in there. Now notice that uh, the buttons are not like they were before and if I come down here with my frame selected you can see that my frame now has a layout in this layout also we can give it a name as well here we have the layout margins so in layout spacing and that's what's determining uh, all that space around the buttons so if I increase that space you can see increasing that space and let me just go back to default here and I can choose the stretching here on the layout so if I choose these to be one, the left, the first element to be one, it's going to use as much space as it needs. And the other one, same thing. So I know these are style sheets, uh, but <laughs> uh, the, uh, we, we're doing more. So here we got the left margin, top margin, and this is where we can change the margin. So if I say, you know, I don't want any margins, I'll just make all this stuff zero. And now we don't have any margins and it looks exactly like the layout like we had before. We're ready to target everything inside of this frame. And I'll just say QFrame and I'll leave it named as frame for now. So let's go back to our main window. And now if I changed from QHBox layout to QFrame and I'll remove this because I changed that name. And we can actually 
uh, just do this. So Q frame, uh, and I'm saying every Q push button inside the Q frame should have this uh, yellow background color. And what just happened was a funky behavior, but if we do a control R, we can see that we are targeting that frame. So we could be more specific just so that we're sure here when we're looking at the UI, we could be more specific and actually give it the name that it has and, and do that here. So we didn't name it, so it's just called frame. So now in the UI, we can see that happening as well. Let's talk about inheritance for a second. So I'm going to quickly add a style here for Q toolbox. We don't have one yet, but I'll, I'll place it there in a second. And I'm just going to add a background color. This is the easiest thing to do here. And I'll make it a ugly blue and say, OK. So if I now add a toolbox in here and I'll just place a Okay, so now we have a toolbox which consists of a page which is a Q widget and a Q push button. So this class is Q toolbox and that's what I just target. And you can see it has that ugly blue. Uh, so I have a toolbox there and I'm just going to remove this frame from here. And I want to remove this Q push button. So I'm saying that frames need to be yellow and Q toolbox need to be blue. Okay, and now you can see that my toolbox is actually yellow. So what's happening here? I set my toolbox to be yellow in my keyframe. These are different classes. What's happening is inheritance. If I if I go to the documentation, you can see that keyframe, uh, actually Q toolbox is inheriting from keyframe. So if I apply a style to keyframe, I'm applying a style to Q toolbox as well. To any any child of keyframe, will have the same style sheet. So before moving forward, I just want to show you how you can use uh, the hoover states and press states for buttons, for example. So if I just grab here a Q push button, and what we do is we do a colon, and we can say hoover. And let's give it a crazy, oh, a crazy gradient, actually, background color. And I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about the gradient uh, editor here. And you, you have these gradients that you can pick from. So I can edit one of these guys or I can create a new one. So let's create a new gradient and, and see what, what this is. So this is wonderful. As you can see, we can really customize our gradients how we want them. Using this editor, we can add new colors here and really start messing about with these gradients. We have access to alpha as well, so we could create some really advanced gradients using this tool. So you know. for now, I'm just going to use this weird one that I just created. I'm going to say OK. Yes, I want to use this weird gradient. Say OK. And when it's hoovered, it's going to have that gradient. In, in here, I won't see it, but there we go. So that's for hoover. You also have pressed. If you want to add the same properties to multiple ones, you can use uh, just a comma and add uh, different properties. So, if, for instance, if I said like pressed here and I made a, a color, a different color, like um, this will overwrite the one on top, obviously, because it reads the code from top to bottom. So now when it's pressed, it's also, also yellow. But let me just make a difference here and do this. So only goes yellow when we press it. Let's quickly go over a local scope and for example if I select frame here uh, so far we're doing, we've been doing everything in main window but if I for example select this frame and I set a background color here add color, background color and press OK so everything inside that frame including the frame itself will have that color Alright, so that's more local, we haven't done that yet, and we could do that as well uh, by doing that to a button. So I can go to the button, and I'll do some styling here. You see the changes in real time, I, ca I can write it down straight up in here. Fine. Right, so this is local, and the good thing about this local style sheet 
is that uh, I, I can change my button however I like it if I grab my button and I throw it in there you can see that now I, in the scratch pad I have my button I can bring it back I can edit name here and say my border button or something right and now I have a, a button with special style uh, that I can add to my um, from my scratch pad into my UI I want to finish up this video talking about dynamic properties so if we go back up here to the main window go into our style sheet I'll just paste, some, paste something here let me just zoom in okay so the way we do dynamic properties is we start with the asterisk brackets the name of the property and this could be any name I call this one dynamic property 1 and this one dynamic property 2 uh, this one I set it to true and this one I set it to 2 so what am I doing here I'm just one one of them has a, a crazy gradient that we created before and the other one is a, a background color let's see how we can use this in, in code okay so I'm gonna use um, create a file here and I'm, I'm just gonna load our UI dynamically using PyQt6 and here we go there's our buttons I'm gonna come back here and just grab an element let's grab this toolbox and as you can see the object name is toolbox so we should be able to access it grab that win and uh, print that toolbox and you can see it's there we are accessing the toolbox and if I set the property on this toolbox using uh, set property so just set property and the name of the property is going to be the name that we used on our style sheet and we're going to go for the first property and remember we we set it only when it's set to true so we're going to set this property to true and I'm just going to grab it because I can't remember what I called it okay so dynamic property my dynamic property okay so when we set it to true now we can see that it has that crazy gradient applied to it uh, it's applied to the background color but there's other elements inside of uh, a toolbox uh, that we didn't cover it's like there's a page inside here and I can do this with any element so if we get our push button let's camel case it okay now you can see that my push button has that uh, that property set to true and if I set it to false obviously now it's not it doesn't have that gradient anymore if we set this to our other property and remember we set that property to number two so if I make to number two here uh, and that property was was set as a number and that doesn't work uh, this is actually the first time I tried that but anyway we, you have this this ability to set it to true or false so this is a way you could uh, potentially use classes and you can put as many styles that, as you want in, in there in code you can also access and create style sheets so for example let's let's check out uh, the window style sheet so I'm just gonna print window and say style sheet and call that function and if we do that we have uh, the style sheet that we created in Qt designer right here in text so we can also set a style sheet using set style sheet and all, all I'm doing is I'm setting the background to be black so this is gonna affect everybody uh, of course I don't need to print that and there we go it's just set a new style sheet for the whole thing as you remember the these push buttons they have their own style sheet in their lo own local space so they're not going to be affected okay so i think that's enough for this video remember that uh i'll leave the link in the description below for the the, the website and in this website uh in the in this page you can find how to style pretty much anything uh, you can do an f3 here and look for for example the q slider how do i do a q slider and here we go customizing q slider and they give you all the inner elements this is something i didn't talk about double column can grab an inner element but you can see this is all here in the documentation Okay, so that's it for style sheets. I don't think we're gonna need to touch style sheets anymore. This is quite a long video and it covers most of it and most of what you'll need. We can now move on to resources and I'll cover that in the next video. Resources, how can you use images and QRC files? So I'll see you in the next video.